Hello friends, welcome to Engineering Panda family. In this video, I will explain ideal sampling with great clarity. Ideal sampling is also known as instantaneous sampling or impulse sampling. Before I start with my explanation, let me tell you the outlines of this video. In this video, I will explain waveforms, calculation, basics and key points of ideal sampling. So let us start this video with first agenda that is waveforms of ideal sampling. See ideal sampling is also known as impulse sampling and instantaneous sampling. So in ideal sampling what we do is we multiply original signal with impulse train. So here in waveforms we have original signal that is x of t. With this original signal, let us assume maximum frequency is FM. In ideal sampling, we will be multiplying impulse train with original signal. So you can observe here we have impulse train. Spacing between impulse is TS. What it means? It means here sampling frequency FS is equals to 1 by TS. In ideal sampling, we will be multiplying original signal with impulse train. So output signal that will be multiplication of original signal X of T and impulse train S of T. You can observe at T is equals to 0. If you multiply this impulse with original signal, then we will be having this much amplitude. At T is equals to TS. If you multiply impulse strain with this original signal, then we have this much amplitude. Likewise, when you multiply impulse strain with original signal, then you will be getting sampled output, right? But to have this ideal sampling, one should know Nyquist criteria. See sampling frequency Fs, which is 1 by Ts that should be greater than or equal to 2 fm where fm is maximum frequency of original signal at nyquist criteria sampling frequency is equals to 2 fm but practically we should keep sampling frequency fs to be greater than 2 fm right if you don't do this in that case there will be overlapping of bands Right now consider we have sampling frequency fs that is greater than 2 fm. So in that situation let me show the frequency response of this output. So here you can observe we have sampling frequency fs and this band and this band that is having somewhat spacing in between. Here one should know width of one band that is 2 omega m in terms of frequency it will be 2 fm so if fs is greater than 2 fm in that case there will be spacing over here right but as if fs is lower than 2 fm in that case this bands that is getting overlapped to each other so in ideal sampling, one should know we should have minimum number of samples so that one can reconstruct original signal from sampled signal, right? So after sampled signal, if you want to reconstruct original signal, then basic criteria is sampling frequency that should be greater than 2 fm, where fm is maximum frequency of original signal, right? If you don't do this, then there will be overlapping of bands. To achieve this output, let me show the basic circuit. See here we have input signal x of t and here we have output signal y of t. See this y of t that will happen as and when this switch is getting closed over here. So switching speed of this switch that is sampling frequency fs. And this switch that will be getting connected over here at the rate of frequency fs. 
and connection over here will make sure that this x of t that will appear at output as if this switch that is connected over here in that case output is getting grounded over here what it means output will be zero so you can observe over here output is zero but as and when this switch that is connected over here at that time you can observe here we are having output and that is having magnitude which is according to original message signal right one more thing that you need to keep in your mind see closing time of this switch over here that should be going towards zero means that should be minimal time during which this switch should be connected over here then only one can generate ideal impulses right so what is the definition of impulse see impulse means there will be amplitude for very less time and that time that should be going towards zero right now let me explain mathematics of this so first of all one should know what is impulse train see mathematically it will be algebraic addition of impulses at the interval of ts means summation where n is ranging from minus infinite to plus infinite delta of t minus n ts and in terms of cosine also one can represent this that is 1 by ts into 1 plus 2 cos omega st plus 2 cos 2 omega st plus 2 cos 3 omega st and so on right see this impulse train that we will be multiplying with input signal and we will be having output of ideal sampling so y of t is x of t into s of t x of t is original signal s of t is impulse train so here we have multiplied x of t with this impulse train now let me explain frequency response of this to understand that you need to convert this y of t into y of omega let me explain how this is coming see this 1 by ts that is constant so we are taking it out now see this x of t is multiplied with 1 so x of t in frequency domain is x of omega now here see this x of t that we are multiplying with 2 cos omega as t what it means it means here we are multiplying two signals one signal is having frequency omega and second signal is having frequency omega s always remember this as and when you multiply two signals one signal is having frequency omega and second signal is having frequency omega s then it will be having algebraic addition of frequency that is omega plus omega s and omega minus omega s so here we are multiplying x of t with cos of omega s t so that is resulting into x of omega plus omega s and x of omega minus omega s similarly when you multiply x of t with cos of 2 omega s so that will be resulting into again two frequency components x of omega plus 2 omega s and x of omega minus 2 omega s likewise when you multiply two frequencies it will be generating two frequency component one is addition of frequencies and second is subtraction of frequencies right and based on this equation only i have plotted that frequency response and those bands like you see here we have x of omega then we have x of omega plus omega s x of omega minus omega s then we have x of omega plus 2 omega s and x of omega minus 2 omega s so likewise there are multiple bands and those multiple bands that may not overlap to each other only if we have sampling frequency omega s that is greater than or equal to 2 omega m where omega m is 
maximum frequency of message signal right so that is the basic condition that one should know now let me discuss about basics of ideal sampling see to generate ideal sample train here we are using switching sampler right practically it is not possible but technically one can say if you have a switch that is getting closed for minimal time it is almost towards zero time then one can say we have ideal switching sampler by which one can generate ideal sampling right here closing time t that should be going towards zero then only one can generate ideal impulse train right and sampling frequency fs that should be greater than or equal to nyquist rate to fm here there are few key points that you need to make sure see this ideal sampling that is not practically possible the reason is one cannot generate such impulse train that is having duration which is t that is going towards zero that is practically impossible right that's why you will be observing it is having high noise interference so this is all about ideal sampling i hope you have enjoyed this still if you have any confusion just place that in comment section i'll try to make sure to sort out of those queries thank you so much for watching this video